Hello, it's Reverend Amanda from St Polinus in Crayford and to all those who know me, welcome to our final antiphon for the 23rd of December as part of our series and this is available on St Polinus uh, website, stplinus.co.uk as, 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 as our contact details as well. And for those who, who don't know me and who are new, welcome uh, to our uh, word and prayer uh, for this day. So our antiphon for today is, O Emmanuel, God with us. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lawgiver, the hope of the nations and their Saviour, come and save us, O Lord our God. And um, the, the last antiphon we had, we had again a gen, a Rex Gentium, so King of Nations and Cornerstone. And today we have another title of King. Um, and we could think of uh, Jesus as, as a king uh, coming, but in this time of Advent, we are uh, waiting for a baby, uh, someone who comes uh, to us in human form, just like us. And at this time of uh, COVID and the pandemic, um, the vulnerability of that baby, and those parents traveling all that way uh, to Bethlehem and being in a uh, stable in a manger, uh, being somewhere you know far away, no proper pl no proper place to stay and have that baby, uh, a time of possible anxiety and uh, worry um, and vulnerability. Um, it's very much like the vulnerability that we may be feeling at this time. So. What is there to hope for? Well, we know that uh, Jesus will come uh, and Christmas Eve is, is tomorrow and we will celebrate that. And uh, I heard recently that it's not only um, that he comes, he comes and shares in our lives. He comes to live with us. He comes to share in our humanity and uh, he, he makes his home among us on earth and lives as, as we do as humans, with all the difficulties and struggles that that, that can bring. Um, but we are to be hopeful because he is with us. He comes to be with us on earth at, at Christmas. And uh, no matter what happens, uh, he is with us and we cannot be separated from God. Now, the reading from Celtic Prayer this morning was from Romans uh, 38, um, chapter 8, verses uh, 38, which, which talks about, about that very thing. Uh, and it says, For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present or, nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ our Jesus, our Lord. So even though we are experiencing separation from families and friends, and we're having to find new ways of um, sharing Christmas with each other, we are still able to share with each other, but also know that God is with us. And this time, more, you know, more than ever, we, we know that, you know, we celebrate that coming on earth uh, to be among us, not above us, not someone distant and far away, but someone actually with us. And uh, as part of that uh, prayer this morning, they talked about um, the lives of Francis and Claire, who are, um, part of the uh, Ada readings and part of the uh, Celtic tradition. And they talked about us living in different seasons. And sometimes there's gentle mists of fall, 
and then there's sometimes the seemingly dead of winter and then the waiting for the poppies of spring and these are all times that we that we go through and all of these ways will will happen to us uh, so we can we can use these changes these times of ease and, and times of hardship um, to, 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 to grow and uh, develop because we know that the spring always does come and uh, we can gain benefits from all the seasons, all our experiences and we can be there for others which is always um, a way that we can be part of God's love uh, his love for us and we can show that to others and that can also bring an increase within ourselves but this is this is how I feel when I'm with others sharing I often gain more than I give um, and I'll leave you with this by Amy Carmichael the soul remembered how she when she was very little the child she has as a child she had sympathized with the gray sea the blue sea was a happy sea. The green sea, when the waves thereof tossed themselves and roared, was a triumphant sea. But the grey sea looked anxious, so the child was sorry for the grey sea. Grey weather she abhorred. Something of this feeling was with her still. Grey weather was not among the things for which she gave thanks. Then God, her father, said to her, All weathers nourish souls. So at this time, if we can try and remember some of the good things that we have um, been able to um, learn and experience. I mean, I'm remembering the clapping on the doorsteps, the real development of community where neighbours have come together. And I'm, I'm nurtured by a group in my road. And it's been lovely to be part of that, especially as I was so new to the area. Um, and for all those other activities and different ways of working which have actually brought uh, new opportunities of coming together and sharing um, thinking about the VE day as well we had the we had the, the people had street parties and uh, distance and social social distance but you know well, actually physically dis distance they're very social um, so even though um, those these times of difficulties are with us we have we have hope um, of um, a God that's with us, that comes to us as a baby, shares with us in our vulnerability, but is also our King and can, and, and can uh, care for us. And when we need Him, we can we can go to Him. So um, I will finish with prayer, uh, and this prayer is actually from the. Um, a prayer for, for Christmas from the Diocese of Rochester. Let us pray. God of life, we lay before you our aching sadness at the empty chairs of our Christmas tables. And we pray for those whose loss is greater and loneliness more acute. For those working hard and in risky shifts through the season. For those people whose lives are spoiled by illness, joblessness and debt. We pray for those who have suffered loss of those whom they love, who have experienced suffering of any kind. Throughout them all, you have shared our life and know our fears. Show us again the love whose power created the endless stars and light up our darkened life with the hope of the Christ child. For his name's sake we pray. Amen. So I wish you all a safe, peaceful, and healthy Christmas, but also a joyful one where we can celebrate all those things which we have received and which we will continue to receive. 
Go well and God bless.